Right folks, so this is the um, the plastering job we have for today then. So as you can see it's a chimney breast, it's in one of the bedrooms and it's a little bit of a mess and it clearly needs some attention. Um, we've stripped off all of the wallpaper and um, we've uh, tried to um, scrape away any uneven plaster. I've um, put bonding powder in any gaps where we have some old sort of you know silk emulsion type paint on the wall all that's been scratched up to give it a nice mechanical coat to give the skin plaster something to hold on to and um, any sort of loose plaster has been scraped back um, the best we can now this um, vent over here that's going to be removed so I'll be doing that in a tick now, I'll only be doing this surface here, I won't be doing the edges. Reason being that I've exposed the, um, the skin bead, the stainless steel skin bead, on the edges here. And that's going to be a hard corner for me to trail up against. So um, I'll only be doing the face of this chunny breast here. Right, so the, the vent has now been removed. I was just going to uh, get rid of any Lock it, make it sticking out. Right, so the tools and materials which I'll be using today are as follows. I will need a hawk to put the plaster on. I will need a trowel um, to apply the plaster to the wall. You will need a bucket trowel to mix up the plaster and um, to clear out the buckets. I've used that scraper there earlier to scrape off any debris from the wall. A pair of gloves to protect my hands. Not everybody uses them, but I'm not a hero. I like to keep my, um, keep my hands in good nick. Um, I've got a couple of buckets down here um, I've got some PVA there and also um, half a bag of multi finish left over from a previous job I've mixed up the PVA look so it's roughly the consistency of milk okay so it needs a good old soak This area down here, look, it needs filling out before I do much more. So I'm just going to put some plaster in there, just to fill it out a bit first. Okay. Um, skim up then to the, uh, the skin bead on the side. I think this is a good uh, example of why it's really handy to have a decent skin bead because you need something to skim up against.
Okay, so this is the first coat then, and of course being the first coat, you know, we're not looking for a perfect finish. I'm just going to take out some of the, um, the rough areas, just smooth it out a little bit really, make it a bit easier for myself for the next coat. I will be putting two coats on here. Not one of these um, one coat merchants. Right, okay, so I've mixed up another batch of plaster, but before I do anything with that, I'm just going to go and take out um, some of these edges up. First thing we should notice is the fact that it should sound different, and indeed it does. So you can hear a bit of a scratch, and this is a lovely sound. We're taking a little bit off look, and what I'm going to do, if I see a little indentations, I'm just going to put that back on there. Okay? You know, it's not all about doing 
the upward stroke, you've got to make sure you keep it nice and level at the bottom as well, okay? Okay, so that's nice and flat. Now, I'm not trying to soak these. I just want um, a nice misty layer on there. What it looks like then from this angle. As I say, if we look towards the light, it'll give you a better idea of what you're looking at, okay. So I've got a wet brush look, and I'm just going to run it through here just to try and simulate um, just to try and simulate um, a sponge flow. So basically this is the cheap bastard's way of doing it, okay. So we sprayed it with water, drawn a brush through it. This is what we got. Okay. So, I think I can start working on this straight away. I don't think Gary left it, I can't remember. But um, I can start working on it anyway with the trout. Okay. So I can't remember whether Gary um, actually left this bit, whether he went at it straight away. So I've taken off quite a bit of plaster, I think um, perhaps I should have left that actually. So look, um, I'm going to leave it at that and come back to it in a bit. Okay, because if not, I'll simply be removing the plaster which I've worked so hard to put on there. So I'm just going to have another quick cup and then come back to it. Okay, as I say, I can't remember whether Gary went at it straight away or whether or not he came back. Um, I'm sure he'll let me know. I'll be back in a tick. So here we go then. Let's bring it down from the top first of all. I'm just pressing it underneath this pitcher rail. Okay, nice one. You can see some of the things of the plaster falling away there. 